a war. It's happening now. It will decide the fate of humanity. The time to choose sides has come. We are the resistance. We are the info war. As soon as the Ukraine refused to enter into the U European Union last month, uh, all hell broke loose there in the country with Soros-backed NGOs trying to destabilize the country. Uh, we now see arms being served up to the so-called liberty-loving uh, freedom fighters, as they're being called on our news, to shoot the police that have been, until now, very, very restrained. Again, folks, you know that uh, I am not a uh, Ruski file. I, I don't have some uh, darling love of the uh, Russian government or, or any of those systems. I do have a liking for peace and not having nuclear war. And I also like common law and common sense, and I wouldn't like the Russians uh, trying to foment sectarian violence to break up Mexico and start a civil war there to destabilize the United States. Uh, we have State Department minions. I have the articles right here. We're going to talk to Lyndon LaRouge about it in just a moment. Uh, openly bragging that they've spent $5 billion to destabilize the country. Uh, America conquest by subversion. Victoria Newland admits Washington spent five billion to quote subvert Ukraine. There's there's video of that, and uh, this is a serious situation. We saw them try to start war in 2008 with the Russians. We've seen them in Syria try to hand that over to Al Qaeda. They know revolution's coming because of world economic meltdown. They want to preemptively start it, in my view, to try to bring chaos out of it. So they can then pose as the saviors. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. And it's extremely immoral that Congress a few weeks ago passed a resolution praising the uh, violent demonstrators and saying the government should just let them take over. Um, again, uh, I try to study the Ukrainian situation. The world's a very complex place. I'm not saying the government's perfect, uh, but they're trying to re remain neutral. This is one of the biggest geopolitical things in, in a long time right now. Uh, and as part of a proxy war with Russia, make no mistake, Syria was about that too. And George Soros is, is, is in there as always stirring things up. And a man who multiple directors of central intelligence uh, said had one of the best private intelligence networks in the world, you can look that up, uh, was Lyndon LaRouge. He was uh, read by Ronald Reagan, you name it. Some call him a leftist, some a right winger. The media always demonizes him just with the term, oh, LaRouge, so that you won't look into what he's actually said and done. Uh, the analysis is spot on. You can disagree with some of the solutions, but they've been calling uh, this stuff before it happens. And he joins us right now uh, to break this down. Thank you for coming on, sir. But first off, you heard my little my little layout there of what I think is happening. Do you think that's accurate, A, and then B, expand on it? Uh, what's What are we facing here? It needs a lot more. There's a, it's, this is a much bigger thing. What you've focused on is, first of all, the the section of Ukrainians which were involved in the events in proximate in that area were Nazis. They were part of the Hitler operation in their lifetime. And these are children of the Nazis. The, we have to remember that the uh, there was a certain section of working for Hitler, which were part of the Hitler system. They killed a lot of Ukrainians themselves, but they also killed a lot of Poles. The uh, assassinations of Poles under Hitler were done largely by these particular Ukrainians who were part of a Nazi system. If you look at their costumes that they wear at home, the costumes of those of Nazi insignia, their origin is Nazi. And so what you have is you have the United States government now is actually supporting these Nazis, and New Newland is one of the key supporters of these Nazis. They are still Nazis. Their record of killing Poles during World War II is enormous. This is the same people, they wear the same costumes, the same insignia, the same le legacy. And by the way, you were in World War II. I, I should also add that. It's, it's amazing how, how long you've been speaking out. It's just amazing. Uh, and I know that is a part of the right-wing group being funded by the CIA. You are correct, sir. Uh, and they're trying to split between Catholic and then, of course, Orthodox is more pro-Russia. But what's the big geopolitical and uh, why is this such a serious situation? 
because it has nothing to do with Syria as such or things like that. These are byproducts of a much larger scheme of things. What we're on the verge of is World War III, thermonuclear World War III. And that's the big problem we have to try to defeat. Now, there are other problems that come in as subsidiary features of this problem. But as, as far as I'm concerned, as long as Obama remains president, we're in danger of being involved in a matter of, you know, a few weeks or day, even days of thermonuclear war globally. That's where we are. And, uh, you know, my, my interest here on this is partly just inside the United States itself. This presidency is destroying our nation. And it's getting us into a thermonuclear war, which we want no part of, and which our real military people want no part of either. There's no reason for a thermonuclear war. As a matter of fact, it will actually cause the extinction of the human species or something like that. And, and, and by the way, a lot of mainline analysts, as you know, are saying this could trigger a nuclear war with the Russians. Explain that to people. Then what is... Well, what you, what you have is when the United States fell under the influence of certain presidents, such as George W. Bush Jr. and Obama, we were dealt we were dealt the dirtiest hand ever occurred. And this has something to do with the way the reasons why Bill Clinton was framed up. And it was a frame up, but that's a whole story in itself. But when he left office, we lost Glass Steagall Law. And that was the first thing that was done. And the glass of Glass Steagall has destroyed the U.S. economy ever since. It's been getting worse and worse and worse. Now, our, our objective should be to get our Glass-Steagall law and not have our house being run by the British Empire through the Wall Street. And the Wall Street gangsters are the real inside problem here. And Obama's nothing, he's not, he's a stooge. He's not really the president. He's a president in name. But he's a stooge for these, in, these international interests. Well, yes, sir, I understand that. When I brought up Syria, I mean, it's part of the Brzezinski-type uh, great game continued proxy war to take every country that Russia has a port in, to get up against Russia's borders, to, to fund radical Islam along Russia's borders. I mean, from what I've seen, the West is trying to foment a takeover in Ukraine to get them to join an anti-Russian coalition. And are you saying that's what could lead then to weapons being moved into Ukraine and then uh, escalating crises with Russia. No, it, it, the, the Russia thing is really, in a sense, minor on this business. We, we, the world has been divided in terms of power between two regions of the planet. One is the transatlantic region of the power, which goes into Europe. Then you've got the area from Belarus on toward uh, Asia, and apart from some terrorist areas uh, in, in the Eurasian region, yeah, that's that's the Iraq climate. And so therefore you have the British Empire and Obama's nothing but a stooge for the British Empire. And Wall Street is the key element here. Wall Street is essentially a British intelligence operation. It's a financial one. And it's the one that's ruined the United States. So what happens is the thing has come to the point that Wall Street and Britain are about to go bankrupt. That is the use of a bailout as a policy, which was done under, actually started with young Bush and continued with Obama. But bailout has ruined the U.S. economy hopelessly. Now, we could cancel bailout, but that would require a decision to do that. But the point is, what's coming now is bail-in, which is the next stage of bailout. Bail-in would cause, in of, of itself, a total immediate collapse of the U.S. economy. And for those that don't know, they've already done it in Cyprus and other areas. They're saying they're going to take money out of our bank accounts to prop up the zombie bank, something you warned of a decade ago or more. So, so what I'm saying, again, to Lyndon LaRouge, World War II vet, you name it, uh, just amazing to have him here with us. There's so few World, World War II vets left, much less one so eloquent. Lyndon, what I'm trying to get at here with you is I understand that it's a bigger global issue. But as the world depression accelerates, you're going to have these uprisings. Then the Anglo-American British Empire is going to try to use those to foment even more breakdown. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is geopolitically, why are you saying it's a danger of thermal nuclear war? Because it is. I, I'll explain it to you. The, what you have is you have a division of the world now into two parts. The Anglo-American system, the, the transatlantic system, the Northern Hemisphere in particular. And that is bankrupt. 
the United States under its present system is totally, hopelessly bankrupt. And what the bankruptcy has been the buildup of this bailout system, especially from 2008. From that point on was the real point where they became it, under young Bush, normally young Bush. And it got worse. Under Obama, it's become much worse. Now, what's happened is the British Empire and the British are an empire. They're not just Britain. They control practically all of Africa. They control under the Euro system. They control most of Western Europe. And that, that's the kind of situation. So you have a situation where the world system is divided into two sectors. One in the Northern Hemisphere is the transatlantic region. And the United States is now a puppet of the British Empire under the current president. If we could get back to a real president, to young Bush and Obama, we could probably get our nation back. But the point is the, the investment, the investment system of the British Empire, including Wall Street itself, is such that they are about to go bankrupt immediately. They're on the verge of it. Now, what their option is, is knowing that the bail-in is coming on. And they do know that bail-in means a general collapse of the US economy. I mean, a monetary collapse, not a breakdown, not a depression, a collapse. So what well, their object is, to say, well, look, the Eurasian sector of the world, that is the wealthier part, Russia, China, India, and so forth, these parts are growing, whereas the United States has been declining economically, in physical economic terms, since essentially uh, the time that Jack Kennedy, the John F. Kennedy, was, was ousted from office, assassinated. Since that time, in the start of the Indochina War, we have actually, as MacArthur warned about this thing, we have actually been in a process of decline. There has been never any economic recovery in reality in the United States. There are some people who become rich, but you'll find that the employment levels, the quality of life offered to people. Now, for example, let's, let's take one very good example of this, fracking. Now, I'm sure you're coming from Texas, you know all about fracking. And we know that the fracking, which is a British operation, is, is now destroying the western part of the United States. It is actually taking, uh, using water, driving it down in order to bring up gas. And the gas they're bringing up is actually, is actually destroying the entire region west of the Mississippi. We have the two, the two leading states of the United States, Texas and California, are going into destruction. Now, there's another little complication in this, which, and there always are complications. In this case, the problem is that the sun, our solar system, has gone through what's called a quiet period. That means that the radiation being supplied to move Earth is less than it was before. And under these conditions, we have the greatest drought in the western part of the United States in probably 500 years. The state of Texas is dying. It, these industries are being shut down. The same thing is true in California and the other states between. But you take California and Texas, if you knock them out of the U.S. economy, you're going to have a total collapse of the U.S. economy. So therefore, we have a great crisis. It's caused by the policies which have gone through by, under certain presidents, particularly since Bill Clinton was taken out of office. The rate of collapse has reached such a point, and the hyperinflation under the bailout system has reached such a point that it's now about to blow up. And bail-in will be the trigger which causes an instant collapse. Now, what's the solution then from the standpoint of London and people like that? The point is that while the western part of the world, the transatlantic region, has been collapsing in physical economy for all this period, ever since Jack Kennedy was, out, was assassinated, at the same time, gradually, in recent times, the Eurasian part, like Russia, uh, you know, China, uh, India, so forth, are coming up. So therefore, the plan is to try to crack the balance of forces between the transatlantic region and the Eurasian system. Now, what that means is if they could get into this one area, which is in the southern part of the Ukraine, and if they could knock that out, then by using US forces based in that area, 
they could take, they could knock out the Ukraine area, that knocking out Russia by an outflanking operation. Now, what this is, this puts us on the edge of a thermonuclear war. The war is between two forces now, the transatlantic region and the Eurasian region. The Eurasian region includes nations like China, 1.4 billion people, and a powerful nation, India, 1.2 or so billion people, and so forth. And Russia is not insignificant. So when you take these forces together and you say that the British Empire, which thinks it's controlling the entire planet, which is stealing our, our oil, stealing our food in the United States and doing all these things to us, that this, this process means that the only way that the transatlantic region, that is the British Empire in particular, could survive is by gobbling up and destroying and conquering Eurasia. Now, when you talk about, think about what the military forces are in China, thermonuclear forces, in India, in Russia, you think about the, mili- the, trans- the similar kinds of forces in the Europe and in the United States. We have the greatest assembly of thermonuclear death ever conceived on this planet. And what's coming to a point is the entire planet is going into this war. My concern is to stop that war. And these, what, this, what these Nazis are doing, these Ukrainian Nazis are doing, is simply the, the intended detonator of a global thermonuclear war. Now, we have people in the United States, including our military, who are against it. My point is, if Obama, President Obama, was thrown out of office now, as he should be, for reason, and I think there are about 20 counts against Obama for violation of the Constitution. He's hyper, you know, he can be thrown out of office immediately. He's, hi- he, he's hyper weak, but the Republican leadership won't do it. Let me ask you this question, because you have a lot of sources. And again, if you're a new listener, the media, the controlled state remedial will go, oh, Lenin LaRouge, ha, 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 for 20 years. I did research on LaRouge and would read their publication 20 years ago. But I've read the Washington Post articles, and I'm not kissing up to him. I'm just telling folks he's a very interesting guy. Going back to World War II, uh, doing all sorts of interesting stuff there uh, in the medical corps from what I read and connections into OSS. And then suddenly pops up and is giving weekly briefings at the CIA to the director and to presidents. And and then the Bushes get jealous of him and have him thrown in jail over a you know, made up crooked toenail. Uh, m- my issue is, is he's not a guy that will brag about himself. He really is interesting, no matter what you think about Lyndon LaRouge. And so much of what he says is just so piercing and thought-provoking. I know you have huge connections uh, out there. So what I'm saying is, I, I was told by a high-level c- commander that they-, they dug up hidden nukes at Dias Air Force Base three months ago, disappeared them. Then suddenly they fired all these nuke commanders. Lindsey Graham said, get ready for where the nukes have been sent to be blown up. I mean, I know this is real. My source doesn't know, you know why they were digging him up, where they were going. They weren't supposed to be there. That they're, they're purging the entire military leadership uh, in, the, in the nuclear department. Do you have any intel, Lyndon LaRouche, about what that's about? It's exactly. It's that, it's that. It's the people who will go along with the British line. Now, I don't think the Joint Chiefs in general will go along with the British line. But as long as Obama is the president of the United States, despite the fact that he has about 20 counts for his immediate impeachment, and this is not just an impeachment to be thrown out of office. This is an impeachment to be thrown in jail. No, I know, but do you have any, uh, obviously if anybody had will, he could be put in prison, but the establishment wants him there to become a dictator, to set the precedent of, a, of an executive dictator who you vote in, who then acts as a dictator uh, outside of their uh, con- constitutional purview. But what I'm asking you, uh, Lynn LaRouge, is this. What, do you know anything about the missing nuclear weapons? I, I know that the, the, the what's happened is we're under, uh, in our government, and you have this Snowden affair, which exposes it, we're under the greatest degree of fraud and fake secrecy about what we're going on in our own government ever before. And this has been specifically the Obama administration. My argument is this. If you want to get understand what we what the problem is, you have to look at what we have to do to solve the problem. And the problem is, for me, I, I can say, because there's a rage building up in the Congress, members of Congress, they want this bum out of office now. 
and we have about 20 particular occasions for throwing him out of office summarily. And not only throwing him out of office, but throwing him into prison. Yeah, why won't they? It's open and shut. It's, you know, it's, not, that, it's not that closed. The, re, the, see, the surge of revolt against this process is in process. We have not won the war, but we're fighting it. We are fighting to save the United States and to prevent a thermonuclear war. Now, if you know what a thermonuclear war is, because this is not a nuclear war, this is a thermonuclear war with modern weapons and modern capabilities. That the minute that war goes to place, and both sides of the power, the transatlantic fight and the Eurasian side, they have the greatest concentration of thermonuclear power you ever, saw, you ever imagined. And if they go to war, they're going to go to full. And there probably will be no long-term survivors of an hour and a half of a thermonuclear war. That's where we are. My concern is get this bum out of office, the president out of office now. You are watching the best of the Alex Jones Show, weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at InfoWars.com forward slash show or become a member of InfoWarsNews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.